Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Fibble Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well, as well as you can be in peculiar, troubling times. Staying at home, staying safe, and hanging out with your families. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's content, which is a Chelsea news video, where I'm going to be talking about a few things. Milan's squad value dropping dramatically, so say C-I-E. S, I want to talk about a striker that's bubbled to the surface in the media this last sort of day or so and how loads of Premier League clubs are in for him, but apparently it's a £90 million asking prize and it's not any striker you might think it's probably going to be. And also, Messi loves Mason Mount. So if you like Chelsea Football Club and you like my content, please consider subscribing to Football Therapy and liking the video and hitting the bell notifications icon and all that good gear. And also a quick plug to my NHS fundraiser. If you want to do something good and help the NHS out in very testing times, please consider donating to my fundraiser to have the opportunity to win a Chelsea Football Club shirt that I will send to you for donating to this charity. Just leave your Twitter handle in the little message when you donate and I'll pick someone at random when it ends in a couple of weeks or just under. All right, let's get into it. Let's just quickly do this story. It's not really a story. Messi's like done this thing where he talks about loads of youngsters to watch and he picked out Mason Mount. And loads of people are losing their heads over this saying, oh, Messi loves Mason Mount. And to be honest, he might have looked at him and thought, yeah, he's a good player. But it's this really generic comment of having seen him play, I can see he's going to be one of the best. That's almost like it's been pulled out of a computer generator and it's just been selected at random. I don't want to like denigrate this because it could be legitimate, it could be Messi genuinely praising what is a young promising player in Mason Mount and I'd like to hope that's the case So let's hope that is the case. Uh, kudos to Mason Mount. Ironic really that he's a massive Ronaldo fan over Lionel Messi but still good to hear right? So really just a shout out for that. But let's talk about strikers man. If you've been watching my channel, I've been keeping you up with every single European striker that's linked to Chelsea Football Club, and they all seem to come from League A, uh, whether it's Metz, Lyon, Lille. That's that's apparently where Chelsea gets strikers from. I mean, worked with Drogba, didn't really work too much with Batshuayi, old Loic Remy as well. There's a lot. Apparently, it's just always France. Victor Osimhen. Osimhen. I always get it mixed up. I think I said it right. Anyway. 21-year-old Nigerian centre-forward who plays for League outside Lille. He's a striker who's pretty good. This season, up until the point that it was halted, he got 13 goals and 4 assists for Lille. Okay, pretty decent, right? Maybe Tammy Abraham level, you know what I mean? Meh. And the reports today are saying that Arsenal, Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester United and Chelsea Football Club are all in for this player. And the price tag has manifested in the media today that it's a £90 million asking price. £90 million! Okay, but okay, before we talk about, alright, just getting my head around this, like Arsenal, they might sell a Bamiang, so they might want to buy a striker. They're still paying off Pepe. They're not going to get Champions League money. Actually, pause. Quickly, off-the-cuff piece of content here. Obviously, there's a <laughs> a chance that the season will become null and void. It might be a very, very, very small chance, but if it does become null and void, then the standings of last season count going into next season, right? So Chelsea are safe. They're all third or whatever. So they're cool. Right. Arsenal finished fifth. And also, there's a very good chance <laughs> that Manchester City's UEFA ban is not lifted for next season, or they don't get the chance to appeal and lift it for next season. Therefore, fifth place is Champions League going into next season, which will be Arsenal, who are currently mid-table this season in terms of form. They would have played an absolute blinder if Arsenal moonwalk into the Champions League into some through some weird, catastrophic pandemic. Gotta laugh, really, right? Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, Victor, the striker from Lille. So, I don't see Arsenal spending that much money, but to be honest, I don't see anyone spending that much money. Sure, United might still want to buy another striker, if um, Igalu doesn't stay, to be honest, they probably, he's 30, he plays in China, fair enough he scored a couple of goals, they'll be looking for someone, you know, they want Haaland, but we'll see what happens there. You know, but 90 million for this guy? Chelsea, are Chelsea going to spend 90 million on Victor Osimhen after he scored 13 goals in League 1? Uh. Think about it, it seems crazy. We all reacted rather radically when apparently 
Leon said Moussa Dembele is gonna cost up to 80 million pounds. Now Moussa Dembele is of a similar age, he's 23, not 21, so they're probably a matter of months apart in terms of age. They both play in the same league, and Moussa Dembele's got more goals. He's got three more goals, totaling at 16 goals and two assists in the league. That's decent, and apparently he'll be cheaper than Victor Osimhen, which is like, what's going on, man? So is this where we're at? We're looking at okay strikers with gargantuan price tags. The fact is, everyone, you watch this channel, you know what's happening. I read the news, I consolidate what the news is saying, who's saying it, and I present it to you guys in this video to offer you content and ease of access to what the football media is saying. Sometimes I talk directly to a couple of journalists and might have a little bit of an in, but ultimately it's the same information resource getting circulated. I react like many of you, 90 million pounds for this Ligue 1 striker is gonna be a madness, do you know what I mean? And the truth is, this health pandemic will affect the transfer window one way or another. Player values are gonna go down, clubs, you know, how much finances clubs have to spend will be altered, and a lot of stuff will change. So these 90 million pound price tags for okay strikers with a bit of potential, you think would dissipate or dissolve, do you know what I mean? Which moves me on to my next story regarding Milan and Donnarumma, the Italian goalkeeper that has been linked to Chelsea of late if Kepa Aretha Balaga is not to be the long-term goalkeeper for Frank Lampard's Chelsea revolution. So staying on the valuation and finance kind of theme, apparently Milan's squad value has dropped dramatically. This was published by CIES and said so it's actually dropped recently by 144 million euros. Got this world health situation to thank for that. An Italian article cites this valuation drop by CIES and says, you know what, prior to this massive drop in squad value, they could have sold Donnarumma, say to someone like Chelsea, for easily 60 million euros, which apparently is what the media was touting as the price tag. But after this recent shift and dramatic drop in squad value, it's much more likely that they would sell the likes of Donnarumma to say a Chelsea for a figure a lot, lot closer to 30 million euros. Of course, being half a little bit more like it from a Chelsea fan's perspective, as this dude is on the last 12 months of his contract. Regardless to him being rated really highly, come on, man. It's like the Timo Courtois situation again, but Courtois actually won league titles. You know, he won La Liga, he won Premier League twice. Um, you know, he'd won cups and stuff. Donnarumma is playing for Milan, who have been struggling for a long time. But he's really, really highly rated, and if indeed Chelsea are, so they have 30 million euros to spend on the goalkeeper, and they can choose between Andre Onana and Donnarumma, probably they would go for Donnarumma in terms of how long he's been playing first team football, how young he is, he's a very big, tall goalkeeper, like dominating, uh, and they probably quite fancy that, especially for that amount of money. He's the long-term successor for Buffon, so, could be a really good buy in that sense. Um, it just, you know, it all depends on what they do with Kepari the Balaga and if they can send them on loan maybe the other way or you know what I mean there's a lot of stuff that could potentially happen. Strange times indeed though it's really interesting to see what will happen as I don't want to say the rules of lockdowns and stuff get more liberal but Chelsea will still be doing digital meetings with representatives who are healthy and willing to do so. People are still working and there will still be people working behind the scenes to look at potential transfers and Chelsea are one of these European super clubs that are very much in the business of doing a massive shakedown and doing a massive overhaul. Whether they can use what's going on in the world right now, uh, as I know it's a bit unsavory to say it, but maybe they can engineer a way to work for them positively in terms of how they run their business. Of course, football always comes second behind health, but people think like this in corporate situations and football, whether you like it or not, is corporate. Anyway, what do you guys think? I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions on the strikers that I've talked about. Talk about Victor, talk about Musa, talk about the goalkeeper, Gianluigi Donnarumma. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on all of these players. And if you've enjoyed the video, guys, please do like said video. That helps me out a lot. Why not subscribe to Football Therapy if you are indeed new to the channel? And you know what, man? While I'm in my apartment all the time, I'm doing a lot of Instagram lives talking to you guys about football and Chelsea and stuff. So why not follow me on Instagram, join in on the fun interactive live sessions at 
football Yannick on Instagram. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for stopping by, guys. Remember, please do consider to donate to my NHS fundraiser. That would mean a lot. Link in the top of the description. Enjoy the football that's not going on at the moment, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.